Be sincere in your practice, words, and deeds. You will feel blessed. His blessings are always showered on all creatures on the earth. It is needless to ask for it. Practice meditation sincerely, and you will understand His infinite grace. God wants sincerity, truthfulness, and love. Outward verbal effusions do not touch Him. Sri Sharda Devi, the Holy Mother, was the divine consort and first disciple of Sri Ramakrishna Paramhamsa. She conveyed a motherly simplicity, grace, quiet dignity, purity, selflessness, and all-embracing compassion, all of which provided comfort to her disciples and devotees. The Holy Mother is revered by Hindus as much as the mystic Sri Ramakrishna. She is thus worshipped and admired as one of the most important saint mothers of all times. Her divine ecstasies, cultivation of humility, love, unconditional service, modesty and other noble qualities made her a role model for others as she showed how one can rise above the turmoil and worry of this ephemeral world and enjoy inner peace in daily life. The Holy Mother demonstrated that such transcendence is possible through a oneness with both the happiness and the suffering of others. At the same time, she often practiced restraint when speaking of her inner feelings and experiences. As she said, the excessive manifestation of divinity creates fear in the minds of devotees. They cannot feel intimate. The Holy Mother is considered an uplifter of souls who maintained communion with God at all times, even while engaging in various daily activities. To her disciples, she was a teacher who removed their doubts, a mother whose loving kindness brought comfort, and a divine presence that assured them of spiritual liberation. Thus, Spake the Holy Mother is a compilation of the sayings of Sri Sarda Devi. This collection offers illumination and guidance for the soul yearning to reconnect with the Divine. We now would like to share with you some of the uplifting sayings of Sri Sarda Devi through an excerpt from Thus Spake the Holy Mother. Divine Grace When will the grace of God descend on me? There is no such rule that grace of God will fall on one simply because one is practicing austerities. In olden days, the rishis practiced austerities for thousands of years with their feet up and heads down and a lighted fire burning under them. Even then, only some of them received the grace of God. How does one get the vision of God? It is only through His grace. But one must practice meditation and japa. That removes impurities from the mind. One must practice spiritual disciplines such as worship and so forth. As one gets the fragrance of a flower by handling it, or as one gets the smell of sandalwood by rubbing it against a stone, in the same way one gets spiritual awakening by constantly thinking of God. Nothing can be achieved without His grace. We have practiced so much japa, we have observed so many spiritual disciplines, but nothing whatsoever is of much avail. How can anyone get liberation unless Mahamaya leaves the path open? O oh man, take refuge in God. Take refuge in Him. 
then alone Mahamaya will be gracious and clear the way for liberation. It is only when one takes shelter in God that one is saved. Repeat the name of God always in the innermost core of your heart and in all sincerity take refuge in the Master. Do not bother to know how your mind is reacting to things around and do not waste time in calculating and worrying over whether or not you are progressing in the path of spirituality. It is ahankara, vanity, to judge progress for oneself. Have faith in the grace of your Guru and Ishta. Be sincere in your practice, words and deeds. You will feel blessed. His blessings are always showered on all creatures on the earth. It is needless to ask for it. Practice meditation sincerely and you will understand His infinite grace. God wants sincerity, truthfulness and love. Outward verbal effusions do not touch Him. About God-realization, the Holy Mother said, Do you know, my child, what it is like? It is just like a candy in the hand of a child. Some people beg the child to part with it, but he does not care to give it to them. Still, he easily hands it over to another whom he likes. A man performs severe austerity and spiritual practices throughout his life to realize God, but he does not succeed, whereas another man gets his realization practically without any effort. It depends upon the grace of God. He bestows his grace upon anyone he likes. Grace is the important thing. He who has really prayed to the Lord even once has nothing to fear. By praying to Him constantly, one gets prema bhakti, ecstatic love through His grace. This prema, love, my child, is the innermost thing of a spiritual life. The gopis, cowherd girls of Rindavan attained it. They were not aware of anything else in the world excepting Sri Krishna. The Kundalini, divine energy, will be gradually awakened. You will realize everything by the repetition of God's name. Even if the mind be not quiet, still you can sit and repeat the holy name a million times. Before the awakening of the Kundalini, one hears the Anahata, heart chakra sound, but nothing can be achieved without the grace of the Divine Mother. The grace of God is the thing that is needful. One should pray for the grace of God. You see, it is the nature of water to flow downwards, but the sun's rays lift it up towards the sky. Likewise, it is the very nature of mind to go to lower things, to objects of enjoyment. But the grace of God can make the mind go towards higher objects. Most splendid viewers, thank you for your company on today's selections from Thus Spake the Holy Mother. Vegetarian, part one of two on Words of Wisdom.